In this video, I'm going to show you how you can add your own illustrations or diagrams that you create yourself to your Google Forms quiz that you've made. So one way to do that would be to use a drawing app. Um, we're going to bring up our selection over here now that we've got our Google Forms quiz ready to go. And we'll go to our Start menu. And if you have any drawing apps here, you could use those to draw a picture. But since we don't right now, we'll just go ahead and do a search for our Paint app. This is Microsoft Paint. It comes with Windows. So we can go ahead and use that one very easily. And this gives us our basic tools to draw a diagram. So let's say we were going to do our volcano diagram. We wanted to ask the quiz taker to point out the different parts of the volcano. So we could start by just drawing our basic volcano outline here. And remember, if your screen or your canvas is too big, you can use the corner down here to make it smaller. We don't need it quite so large in this case might make it easier to draw sometimes if it's not so big. So I'll draw the ground, the volcano, and then I can start drawing the components of the volcano down here. And remember, if you want to use the paint filling tool, the paint bucket or fill tool, we've got our magma chamber down here coming from the mantle. You gotta make sure you close off the edges if you wanna be able to fill in those colors. And then we can take our paint bucket and we can very easily color it in. I can make the, the ground brown. And see here there's a gap over on this side. So I can undo that, make sure I've got it filled in all the way to the edge, and then I can fill it in. Now obviously you can be a better artist than I am, but the main key point here is that we're not spending too long on it, we're still able to draw a decent picture. Now keep in mind, I'll use some crayon style for the smoke there coming out, and I forgot to draw my lava flow, so maybe I'll use a marker for that part. Okay, so now that I've got my basic illustration in there and I want to ask people about, I can then start drawing the sections you're going to want them to label. So this is kind of like a fill-in-the-blank labeling problem, but you're going to give multiple choice questions instead to ask them what the different parts are. So we need to put numbers instead of blanks, instead of blank lines, you would put a number to point to each section, and then you can ask them what those numbers represent. So for example, I, from a magma chamber, I can make that one. Make sure you do it with a nice dark color like black. So we can just write the number ourselves and put a little arrow. Or if you want it to be more fancy, there's ways to add arrows this way. There's arrow symbols you can use. Um, there you can use the text tool. So if we wanted an actual letter to be typed in there instead, we could input it that way. And normally we'd want to use our keyboard for this part. It would be a little easier than bringing up the virtual keyboard down there at the bottom. But if you do need the virtual, it's at the bottom here what the touch keyboard is. And we'd want to make that bigger. So we could change the font size up here. So there are apps that let you do this a little bit better than this one does. Uh, more easy to use with the stylus pen and the touch screen. But this one comes with Windows. It's fairly easy to use. So we want our pipe here and our vent and our lava flow. So it depends how fancy and nice you want it. If you want straight lines, you can use the straight line tool. This can give you better arrows, for example. If I wanted this to point to the magma chamber in a nice orderly fashion, I could do it like this instead of using the, the regular drawing tool. So if you want it to look nicer and neater, you can actually use text tool and the straight line arrow tool. So now that you've made your diagram, you're going to do File, Save, or Control S. And you've got to tell it where to save it. Right now, it's asking us to save it in the pictures folder, which is fine. But it says it's a PNG file, and those take up quite a bit of space. So let's give it a good name first, which is file name. We want to name it something logical. In this case, I'm going to call it Volcano Diagram. I'm typing this in on the keyboard this time. And then under PNG file type, let's change that to JPEG. Those take up less space on the internet and we can see there's already a volcano one that somebody made there. We click save. Now we can just swipe the side over here to switch back to our 
quiz, or sometimes you might see down at the bottom there's two tabs that you can click on. If, if you're on the desktop mode, you can click back and forth between your windows down at the bottom. And so we'll switch over, since we've made the picture now, we have to do Add Item Image. And we'll add that image in there. And we have to use the Upload button up at the top and choose an image to upload. We're in Documents right now. That's not where we saved it. We saved it under Pictures. So let's change our Files link and choose Pictures folder. Pictures. And now I can find my volcano diagram and press the open button down at the bottom and it will upload it. So what it's done is it's inserted that volcano diagram into my quiz and I can call it with uh, untitled here. I can change the name to volcano diagram so we can refer to it in our instructions. And then down below we'll need to add our questions. So click done first. Now an image is just an image. It doesn't automatically have a question that goes with it. So we can add multiple questions for this and we can make a multiple choice one. So this would be number question number three or four here. Let me just make, make sure there's number three, I think. Yep, last one was number two. So this would be number three. Or what is the term for number one in the volcano diagram? And then we can give our choices down below. We've got our four terms entered there. And we're asking them to identify which one is number one in the diagram. And once you've entered that, you can click Done. So since we're going to be using the same diagram for four different terms in the drawing, we can actually take this question and we could duplicate it four times. So here's a copy or duplicate button right next to the pencil. So you can duplicate the same question and we can keep the same answers that way, but we can change it to the correct one. So in this case, we'll make it four. What is the term for number two in the volcano diagram? So see, it was very easy. All I had to do was change it to say the new question number and the new uh, item number on the diagram. And then I can click done. And now we've got three and four have the same answers, but they're referring to different parts of the diagram. I could duplicate it again, and since we've got four different parts of our picture here, we can duplicate that four times, use the same question four times, but refer to a different number. So I could duplicate here, and again, I would just change it to question number five. And question number five is, what is the term for part three in the diagram? And that's how you go about adding diagram matching questions in your quiz.